While I was in the service, I found out that there is an ongoing, non-consensual human experiment, and it's testing a human-machine interface weapon. There is a group um, here in the United States uh, that are uncons- you know, non-consenting uh, uh, human subjects for the testing of this weapon, and they're calling themselves targeted individuals. We are seeing an alarming rate of complaints of use of electromagnetic weapons. Uh, Microwave auditory effects, silent sound spectrum, EEG cloning, which has taken the lab out of the laboratory and into the home. Most of these, from the research that we reviewed, can be done remotely. Uh, It seems to be more weapons research than medical research. Um, I've personally corresponded with upwards of 1,500 victims, all complaining of identical complaints from every state in the nation. They're being accused of being crazy. They're being accused of being paranoid and schizophrenic to completely cover up what is in fact a social engineering program and a covert research and development program for some of the most sophisticated and advanced technology that the world has ever seen. I've worked on projects for the CIA, Justice Department, Department of Defense. Is this the stuff voices in the head and things like that? Yes. We've run into a few people that claim they got voices in their heads, they sleep inside tinfoil boxes, they do a lot of crazy things, it seems. But when they talk to us, they seem totally normal. They seem totally sane. Are these people crazy, or is the government doing this to them? The the government's doing this to them. He's not even bothering to hide it. They're called voice of God weapons. Obviously, if members of the general public are not aware of the existence of this technology, which many of them are not, most of them are not, they will conclude that this person must be crazy. And as a result, they will recommend psychological evaluation for that person. You can see the way this is going to go and the way it is going right now. As good people, helpless people that are being abused and tortured and enslaved and experimented upon in America today, American citizens cry out for help from their fellow Americans And their fellow Americans say, why don't you take some Prozac because we think you're schizophrenic. When this is a highly technical program, all of the symptoms are induced by a technology that is so fucking sophisticated, it is horrifying beyond description. The CIA claims torture works. Now, they're talking about physical torture. Now, no touch torture is a whole new topic, a whole new category. Most people don't believe it's happening. You can be tortured in your own home. No one will believe you. So the U.S. military, um, they are actually working on augmented reality in VR right now. Again, it's so funny because the, the military contacted me and asked if I would help them. And I'm reluctant to do that because I like talking about everything. And it would be top secret, whatever they told me. So it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, uh, I have a lot of ideas, but I don't want to know what you're doing because I only want to know it's public. So this is public, um, but how they're doing it is not public. But I will tell you, um, one of the things we'll be able to do is we'll be to outsource functions of our brain. So we'll be able to outsource, we'll be able to upload our memories to the cloud. What they're doing is looking at the pattern in the brain, and then they're matching that pattern. uh, They're putting that into a database. So if you can match the patterns in somebody's brain to to uh, to the patterns in the database, you can literally start to read their mind. Every time a word comes up, you know it. Oh, that word came up for that individual. Now, will the patterns be identical in every person? Probably not, though the information will be stored in slightly different places. But it wouldn't take long for you to train a machine to read your mind. Now, that's just the beginning. They may be able to have algorithms sophisticated enough and they get enough samples, enough data that that the the, the AI could actually learn over time uh, uh, what the general rules are for different words and then you could apply it to anybody. Remember, we we were talking about cloning, brain cloning, brain heterodyning is the actual word, which means modulation of other brain signals within yours. And so they're cataloging and classifying brain patterns, which can be uh, transformed and transmitted into other human beings. 
you could literally start to talk, communicate with other people. So my lecture, we could all be standing here silently. <laughs> and I could just be communicating it to you. Uh, you. I could be talking, you would talk to people. They could be, you could literally have conversations with people without ever getting on your phone anywhere in the world. You know, good, goodbye WeChat or Google Hangouts. <laughs> we could all just be on our brainwaves, right? A computer multiplexer routes the voice signal of the sender through microwave towers to a very specific defined location or cell. The receiver is located and tracked with pinpoint accuracy by their biometrics, DNA, iris, gait, facial recognition, and brainwave patterns. However, the receiver is not a cellular phone. It is the human brain. This technology can also be used to manipulate the emotions of the target. It can induce fear, love, hate. It can cause you to be nervous. It can cause you to be confident. It can cause you to be depressed. It can cause you to be happy. It can cause you to feel any fucking emotion at any time by artificially inducing them. Emotions are also data. We could start literally to feel somebody else's pain. And now we say, I feel your pain. We don't really feel their pain. But in the future, we may actually really feel their pain. Like if they're sad, all of a sudden we could tap in, you know, to your wife or girlfriend or boyfriend, and you could be like, oh my God, I feel your pain. <laughs> I feel your anxiety, you know? What they do is they go and get your garbage in front of your house and get your DNA. And then once they've got your DNA sequence, they can then go to a supercomputer and they can biocode directed energy attacks that will only go and bioresonate with your body. So that three people can be standing right next to you and nobody's going to feel the harassment except you because these signals are biocoded to your body's tuning only. And then they can send down D2K, they can send down any, any symptom they want because they're in full control of the bioresonance of your bioenergy. The frequency that's being used, at least in the most advanced forms, that hacks into the mind. Once that frequency hacks into the mind, it has access to the entire mind and the entire body. And so all it's doing is manipulating the electrical signals within the brain. And so by manipulating the electrical signals within the brain, it can, it can make you feel stuff. It can make you feel sensations. It can make you do stuff. It can make you think stuff. What's happening normally is uh, from my understanding with the most advanced um, type of this technology is they are manipulating your brain to be able to feel sensation in other parts of your body and other people and people will interpret that as a shock let's say to your leg um, it feels as though someone's shooting you with energy or a frequency or a spark or electricity in your leg but there's not actually anything being shot at your leg. What's happening is they are manipulating your brain and then it is causing you within the part of the brain that, that deals with touch and sense and feel, it is causing you to perceive that someone is shocking you in your leg when that's not actually going on. It's just generating that feeling in your mind. And let me give you an example that a lot of TIs go through. Um, they will say something like, I'm stabbing you in the back. Can you okay. feel that? And the TI will be like, yes, I feel that. And then they'll give it a score. Okay. How much misery and suffering did that cause? And all that's being done is being played back into the brain, you know, the central nervous system. It's not an actual physical touch. There was no harm being done in terms of the, the physicality of the individual, but They'll go through these like three a day, different tortures. Okay, we're gassing your eyes with tear gas. And you know, their eyes will actually tear up. There will be a response and they'll itch and they can't see, but this is all done through the brain. It's the brain's reaction to these tortures that they're applying back to them. So the brain, question. the brain feels the pain as if it's real. That's there, right. We call it no touch torture. And so the assumption for most human beings. Well, if I don't see blood or mutilation, it can't be that bad. Well, what the brain perceives is far worse than that. In fact, the pains are amplified, sensitized, and are ex you know, extremely vulnerable to these, uh, these circuits being stimulated. Torture itself, it's a high stress level. 
So yeah. one of the objectives of torture is to keep them at maximum pain and the highest stress levels possible. And it breaks my heart to know what's being done to them by some real sick, evil, out of control people who have taken their positions of power and authority and taken advantage of it. They have violated the trust of the American people. They have violated the trust of the stockholders and their companies. They have violated the trust of their co-workers. They violated the trust of their employees. They violated the trust of their family and their friends. They violated the trust of their children. And they violated the trust of all Americans everywhere and indeed all human beings all over the planet. They have violated that trust by using their positions of power to conceal themselves from scrutiny and then use that veil of secrecy to launch what amounts to an attack on a nonviolent American population who are just trying to live their lives and make a living and be happy, love their friends and family and do the best they can. So, you know, like any technology, uh, there are great things we could do and then there are very horrible things that could result from it that are unanticipated. Now, if somebody hacks into your cell phone or your bank account, they can steal your identity. But it's not your real identity. It's more like your money. <laughs> and that's bad enough, right? That's pretty bad if you get hacked um, and they steal your, you know, they do identity theft. But if they're, if they're connected, if your brain is connected directly to the internet, then it will be real identity theft. They could take you. They could literally erase you. They could reprogram you in a way without you even knowing it. So every, you think you're in control of your own will, but it's actually somebody else. It can literally stop your own thoughts from happening and replace them with other thoughts uh, by sending thoughts to your head. And it's so sophisticated that you cannot tell where these thoughts are coming from. There's no way to, to discern that they are coming from somewhere other than your own mind. So you can imagine how bad this would be for people that don't even realize this technology exists. And they're having these thoughts which they think are spontaneous because uh, being under the influence of this technology now, kind of having been on both sides of it, I am, I am just amazed um, at the way it works. And I know that the thoughts that they beam into your head originate from the exact same place in your mind that your own natural thoughts originate from. So if I didn't know I was under the influence of this technology, then I would have no idea that anyone was influencing my thoughts at all. And that's exactly what it could be used for. It could be used to sway people in terms of their opinion, to make them go along with a certain agenda. It can be used to turn groups of people or individuals against each other uh, for whatever purpose. And who do we trust with this technology? Well, apparently not Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> he didn't do that good a job at protecting our data. <laughs> you know, do we trust a government? Do we trust uh, Donald Trump? <laughs> do we trust, who do we trust? Yeah, decentralized, a blockchain, right? There's, you, uh, you're gonna have to have technology uh, that protects us, technology which really doesn't exist today and it has to be so foolproof and we have to have so much faith in it that we're willing to open up our brains to that potential of being hacked. So my final slide here is that, you know, our future could go two ways, right? We could literally create heaven on earth. So we are all one giant being and we are all working in unison and we are experiencing these amazing things. Or it could be hell, where there's some evil AI or evil people controlling everything we do and we're more like zombies, you know? Where we don't even know it. Like we think we're free and we're not actually free. And I always thought that that was a possibility for the future. I'm aware of some of the predictions of the future and the direction the country's going and, and it could get really bad. Some horrible things could happen in the future. And one of the things I've been struggling with trying to wrap my mind around is that this is not about the future at all. It's happening right now in America today. And it's a goddamn disgrace. 
what these people have done is turned this technology into a video game. And that is exactly how they approach it. They approach it as though they are playing a cross between Sid Meier's civilization on their computer and Sims, where they are controlling all of civilization and also controlling people on the individual level. It is infuriating. It is highly, highly illegal, and it must be stopped now.